Hi everyone, how are you doing? So DJI just released their updated 2025 security white paper and it's long, over 70 pages of deep technical and policy content. But what it contains directly challenges the ongoing narrative that DJI drones are a national security risk. Now its significance is not just for enterprise users, it's for pretty much anyone that owns or wants to own a DJI drone. So today, let me break it down for you in plain English, like what it says, what it means, and why it's such a big deal, especially as the US government continues to push efforts to blacklist DJI. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you happen to be here for the very first time, my name is Russ, thank you so much for stopping by. Now, I know that some of you are probably sick of beating this dead horse, but I think it's important to highlight the importance of this white paper. And if it helps raise an eyebrow on even one lawmaker out there, then I think it's worth it. So first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The US government has made multiple moves over the past few years to restrict DJI, from adding them to economic blacklists to potentially banning their products under the guise of national security. And the argument has been that DJI drones are collecting sensitive data and then sending it back to China. And I know it sounds very, very scary until you actually dig into what DJI is doing to prevent that from happening. That's where this white paper comes in. This document outlines all of the security measures built into DJI's drones, both consumer and enterprise models, and the steps that they've taken to protect user data. And I'm gonna say it right up front. If you read this white paper and you still think DJI is secretly spying on Americans with their drones, you're either A, not paying attention, or B, you're pushing an agenda. DJI makes it crystal clear your drone does not send any photos, videos, or flight logs to DJI servers, unless you choose to. And that's a big one. You have to manually sync that data. And as of June of last year, 2024, users in the US don't even have that option anymore. DJI removed it. No syncing to DJI servers, period. They've also included something called local data mode or LDM, You've probably heard of it, you know about it, I've mentioned it before. When you turn this on on your drone, the drone's app goes completely offline. There's no internet access, no background data, no accidental syncing. It's like flying your drone in airplane mode, which is kind of ironic. If you're a recreational pilot just flying in your backyard or at the park or something like that, your drone's data stays with you. Your phone, your SD card, your controller, not DJI and not China. Now you might think all of these security measures are geared towards just big enterprise users, but no, even consumer drones like the Mini 4 Pro or the new Mavic 4 Pro benefit from many of the same protections. For example, data encryption using industry standard AES-256. Now, in case you may not know what that is, that's advanced encryption standard with a two to the power of 256. Now, to help illustrate it, and I had to look this up myself to see how big that was and how significant that was, there are, let's say, an estimated 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone, right? If you ran a key every second for every star in our galaxy, it would still take longer than our universe has existed to solve it. Very, very secure. Also, secure boot that ensures the firmware hasn't been tampered with. Also, reset all functions to wipe everything from your drone encrypted logs and media files if you want them to be. And if you're an enterprise operator, say you're flying drones for like inspections or public safety or utilities or something like that, DJI gives you even more control. Encrypted flight logs, password protected media, secure offline updates, and even a full on premises server option so nothing ever touches the cloud. Undeniably secure. And if our government ever completes the audit that they've been instructed to by the latest executive order from our president, it will be the ultimate mic drop for DJI. This isn't DJI just saying, trust us. Over the past seven years, several third-party firms like Booz Allen Hamilton and most recently FDI Consulting have audited DJI's products, their hardware, their software, their cloud infrastructure. 
In fact, FTI just did a full audit of the Mavic 3T, the Pilot 2 app, and the RC Pro controller in 2024, and the result, no unexpected data transmission. And when local data mode is on, zero outbound traffic, and that's verified. Here's another common claim. DJI stores your data in China. Not true, at least not for users outside of China. Yes, if you live in China and you're using a DJI drone, you can store that data in China. Drone data for US users is stored on AWS servers in the United States. Enterprise operators can even choose Europe or Japan, depending on the platform that they're using. DJI has even gone a step further by offering Flight Hub 2 on-premises, which lets you store everything locally on your own private servers. That's about as locked down as it gets. Since 2017, DJI has been running a bug bounty program, paying out over $150,000 to security researchers who help find vulnerabilities. That's what responsible tech companies do. They welcome scrutiny and they fix problems fast. Now, you may have heard some longtime anti-DJI zealots continue to talk about security flaws that were found back in 2017. And yes, there was an issue. And when it was discovered, that's when DJI started the bug bounty program. There has not been a single security issue since that time. But for some reason, some people love to live in the past. And this white paper, it's not just some vague marketing fluff. It's technical. It's detailed. It lists specific drone models, firmware processes, SDK behaviors, encryption protocols, and even links to open source repositories. If DJI were hiding something, they would not be publishing this paper. So why does all of this matter? Because despite all of this, despite the technical protections, the independent audits, and the fact that DJI products are used by public safety agencies across the country, the U.S. government continues to push for an outright ban of DJI drones. Now, there's a possibility that at the end of 2025, DJI would no longer receive FCC authorizations, which means that they couldn't legally operate in the U.S. That would cripple thousands of small businesses, like real estate photographers, surveyors, farmers, first responders, like the list is endless. People who rely on DJI drones every single day and also, it's not just the users that would suffer. It's the people that they are serving that would suffer. Everyone forgets to mention that. The trickle-down effect of a DJI ban, I don't think can be fully comprehended until it actually happens. It would affect so many aspects of our lives, and only then would people realize how impactful this ban would be. And for what? Because of a hypothetical risk that has never been proven and now stands in direct contradiction to this security white paper. Look, should we care about national security? Absolutely, of course, I mean, that's common sense, but that concern should be rooted in facts, not fear. And the fact is DJI is taking security seriously, arguably more seriously than some US-based tech platforms that collect and sell your personal data every single day. Pretty much anything you use today that's connected to the internet is collecting your data and most likely selling it to someone. You know who isn't doing that? DJI. Now, one more thing that I think needs to be mentioned that kind of coincides with this is you may have noticed if you try to order something from DJI, whether it be on their website or from Amazon, you can't find any stock right now. And that has to do with the Customs and Border Protection sanctions right now against DJI. And DJI gets a lot of the blame, but it's not their fault because what happens is some people are trying to order a DJI product it gets to the United States border and Customs says, nope, sorry, this is not allowed in our country because we're holding sanctions against DJI right now for something that they did six years ago, okay? So back then, I've said this before, maybe you've heard it, but I'll say it again, the Chinese government purchased some drones from DJI and then the Chinese government used those drones to spy on some minorities. And so that made our government say, you know what, that's human rights violations, but you know, it took them six years to say, you know what, we're not gonna let your products operate in our country because you participated in human rights violations. My point of view is blaming DJI for what the Chinese government did with their drones is like blaming Baskin Robbins for making you fat, right? <laughs> you can say that about a lot of things, but I'm sorry if I'm projecting a little bit of anger here, but like, it's just interesting, the timing, right? 
the timing where our government has been unable to prove any security issues or any flaws or any problems with DJI products. But you know what? Customs all of a sudden now, six years later says, you know what, you can't, you can't operate in our country. So <laughs> it just, it's, it's how our government works. If they want something, they're gonna get something and they're gonna find a way to do it. And that's what's happening with DJI. And it's really, really unfortunate because it's gonna affect my livelihood. It's gonna affect 400, 500,000 people's livelihood if DJI does get banned uh, because we're not gonna have the tools available and we're not gonna have a substitute to be able to do what we need to do. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just, I just had to mention that because that's probably why you're not able to get a DJI product right now. Now, is it gonna get better? I hope so. DJI has supplied all of the required documentation. They've submitted it to our government, but our government is just sitting on it. They're not doing anything. They haven't furthered the conversation. It's just kind of stalled because that's how they wanna play. That's how it's happening. So. I don't know what else to say. Like, I, I, I'm very, very frustrated with it all, but I still have hope. And I hope you guys too, because it's, it's gonna get better somehow, whether, whether they figure it out and our government says, hey, you know, you're right, you, you didn't do anything. So they're gonna lift the sanctions and everything will go back to normal. And if it doesn't happen that way, and if DJI is shut down, eventually there's gonna be some substitutes, you know? two, three, four years from now, but that's the problem. What do we do in that time? Like, what do we do for the next couple of years to do our jobs? So that's where the frustration comes in. But anyway, if you're a drone pilot, whether you're recreational or commercial or whatever, I do recommend reading this white paper. I think it's really educational for people to read it. It's pretty technical, but I think you can get something out of it. I think you should understand the tools that you have that protect your data. And if DJI gets banned, it's not just about losing one brand, you guys. It's about losing innovation, accessibility, and affordability. So click that thumbs up if I was able to educate you in some way today, I really appreciate that. Subscribe to stay updated on this topic. Follow me on all social media, at 51drones for additional content. Have a great day, everyone. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.